Good morning, everybody. Josiah here from easycaters.com. And today I wanted to talk about scanning for stocks that have a low float. Um, a lot of traders are interested in this, especially day traders, um, because, uh, you know, I know a lot of traders that will say, look for gaps in the morning, uh, stocks that are gapping up or down or whatever, and also have a low float so that whenever public interest, whenever the public sees the gap in the morning, public interest comes into the stock, you know, new orders come in and the stock because of the low float is a lot more likely to move more, more quickly uh, or be more volatile during the day. So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it can be a little bit of a double-edged sword because of, you know, essentially you're looking for a lower liquidity and uh, a lower number of shares that are available for sale or to purchase at any given time. So, um, so it can be a double-edged sword, just be aware of the risks there because you know, it can move faster uh, both in your direction and against your direction. So just be aware of that. But low floats, um, you know, just, if you understand the risk, it can be a good strategy to pursue. So, <clears throat> There are three different ways of approaching this with Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim does not actually have uh, any kind of float data in the platform itself. They don't have a column that you can view each stock's float with. They don't have a scan filter that allows you to scan for stocks with a certain float. Um, so we have to basically come up with workarounds in Thinkorswim to get to where you wanna go with this. The first method, is to use the stock filter for shares. And this doesn't refer to shares floating, it refers to shares outstanding, which is a different measure. Uh, shares floating is going to be a subset of shares outstanding. So this is not as accurate as, you know, just scanning for uh, stocks with a, a float of say 1 million or 10 million or whatever, whatever you want to look for. Um, but, because we know that shares floating is going to be a subset of shares outstanding, we can limit this down and say, okay, I only want stocks that have 10 million uh, shares outstanding or less, because then I know that whatever results come back are going to be, you know, even if they're not exactly what I want, they're going to be more likely to be closer to what I want and so forth. So that's, that's the first and probably the easiest option, uh, though it's, you know, maybe not as accurate as you'd like. So the next option is to use Thinkorswim Scanner to look in a particular watch list. So um, what we can do is uh, if you have access to a, another broker, uh, another data source, that type of thing, where you do have float data, uh, then you can import that uh, watch list of low float stocks into Thinkorswim and then scan against only that watch list. So if you see up here in the top left corner here, it says scan in all stocks. So you can choose all different categories for the scanner to look for the universe of symbols that the scanner will be searching through. Um, but you can also point it at uh, your own watch lists. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. So if you have, you know, so you can point this at the Russell 1000, you know, whatever of the built-in lists you want, uh, the all stocks universe, um, you can even create your own combination such as all stocks that are also optionable. So if you say scan in all stocks intersect with optionable, then this will only search in stocks that have options. So there's lots of different uh, combinations you can create here, but one way to do this is to import a list into Thinkorswim and then scan only within that list. And so um, if you have another broker that, ha that provides you a list of uh, low float stocks in some way that you can export into Excel uh, or copy and paste, then you can go to MarketWatch and <clears throat> create a new watch list here. Uh, just go to create watch list. <clears throat> And you can just give it a random name here. Let's see, uh, AAA test. And so I've got a blank watch list. And now I'm gonna go over to my theoretically, you know, the, um, uh, 
list of symbols that I just found from another data source, and I'm going to copy those, and I'm going to go in here and select import and paste from clipboard. And so you can see the symbols start showing up here. And I'm going to say replace current symbols or add to current symbols, whatever is uh, valid in your case, if you're updating an old list or uh, creating a new list. And then it brings in those symbols for me. And so these are theoretically low float symbols. Uh, I mean, this is an older list that I have, but uh, and so this is a little outdated. But so now I can go over into the scanner and point my scanner at that list. And so you can see here, um, if I'll if I can get my mouse to cooperate here, AAA test is the watch list that I just created of low float stocks. And so now I can scan within that list of low float stocks that I, you know, that I know have a float less than whatever threshold I want. And then whatever results the scanner pulls up, I know are low float stocks. So that's that's the second workaround or, or way that you can do this in Thinkorswim. And the third is basically the same. Um, and the only thing is if you don't have uh, access to a data source, a third party data source like that, that you can import uh, symbols into to scan uh, into Thinkorswim to scan against, then I provide that service on my website here uh, with the low float stock list. So I pro provide these lists every month. And if you purchase this, then this is an ongoing thing that I do for you. It's not just a one. Uh, and what you'll do is every month you can just go in here to your orders and click view your order. And there'll be new new links here that will allow you to import the fresh lists into your thinkorswim platform every month and so what that would look like is uh this right here so this would be like the older this is an example of some older lists that i created and so here i have a list of stocks that have less than 100 million shares float 50 million 30 million uh 10 million and 1 million and so forth so this this particular list only has stocks that have less than 1 million shares float. So I can copy that link and I can go over here and just set up open shared item. This would be how you would do it every month. You can paste that link in, hit preview. It tells you what it is. Low floats less than 1 million. And so I'll open that. And it says it's been saved as from Easy Caters, blah, blah, blah. So it gives it a default name, but I'm going to rename it something that I'll remember. So I'll name it AAAA test two. And so now that imported the watch list into my um, Thinkorswim, and I could pull that up on Market Watch, or I could pull that up on a sidebar watch list. But you can see here, if I click down, it goes to AAA test two. And so that's the list that I just imported. And so I can go here, and in my scanner, I can go select that. Um, A's would be under the A section, Josiah, remember that, all right, uh, AAA test two, and so now I'm scanning within that new list that I just imported with the link, and then you can import, you know, if, if you want to scan for stocks with less than 30 million, or, or, you know, if you have several different scans you want to run, you can use any or all of these different lists, uh, or you can just pick and choose one or two. Um, so, I provide those lists on the website, and to get them, you again just go to your My Account section, go to Orders, and click View Order. And every month there'll be fresh links here under the description of the, uh, or under the order details. So that's how you get the links uh, or the uh, new lists every month. And then I've just shown you how to import those and point your scanner at that list. And then whenever you run your scan, it will um, find stocks that match the, the whatever criteria you have in here for your scanner. Um, it will look only within that list to find those criteria. And so you'll know that that's uh, finding low float stocks for you. So those are the three methods that I know of to, to use float data in Thinkorswim. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I know a lot of people like to trade with uh, you know float data. Uh, especially low float data. So these are the methods that I know of to uh, accomplish that in Thinkorswim. Uh, unfortunately, they don't make it super easy. Uh, I'd like, you know, I'd love it if they would be able to provide us, you know, a column and uh, a scan filter that would allow us to sort or scan by float data directly. But in the meantime, 
Um, this is the best way I know of to accomplish that. So if you're interested in that, uh, check us out at easycaters.com where uh, that service is available here. And uh, otherwise you can, uh, like I said, you can do it yourself on your own by creating your own lists from third-party data sources and importing them into Thinkorswim, or you can make do with the built-in shares outstanding filter in the stock actor scan. So those are your options and hopefully this has been helpful and I will talk to you later. Thanks.